All right, let's try this one more time. All right, all right, all right. Let's get on board. Everybody coming on board here in a minute. Let's get with it. What's going on? My internet's acting a little crazy this morning. Is that what it is? Yes, yes, yes. There we go, we're connected. Cindy Martinez, God bless you. Glad you made it on board this morning. Having a little technical difficulties this morning, guys, so bear with me, but we're all coming on board. Nanine, good morning, good morning. Gloria Hicks, good to have you with us this beautiful morning. Dennis Lopez, my prayer warrior, God bless you. Always good to have you with us in the morning. Praise God. Geraldine Waite Henry is with us along with Tammy Massey. God bless you. Elizabeth Albano. Hello, hello, hello. Lynn Bell. Good morning, good morning as well. Praise God. It looks like we're having a few. Kay and Dre May, of course, it wouldn't be the same without you. Renee Rice. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, good morning. God bless you as well. Yes, amen, amen. Let me take this off of here. Looks like my, my uh, internet stuff is kind of streaming kind of crazy. Vicky, uh, Mickey said, good morning. <laughs> I hope there's a typo. <laughs> That's hilarious. Teofilio Ortiz, bendiciones, mi hermano, all the way from New York City is with us as well. And everyone is coming on board. I know we're getting a little bit of a late start this morning. Peggy Stevens, <laughs> absolutely good to have you with us as well. And uh, so praise God. It's Wednesday, right? It's a good day. Uh, yes, good morning, Carmelo. Good to have you with us as well. Other folks are coming on board. Peggy Stevens, yes, good morning. Hallelujah, you need to get it together. Come on, some, I know I do. Lord have mercy. I'm not sure what's going on with the internet this morning, but praise God. Zaida Preston, good to have you as well. Amen, amen. Lisa, good to be, glad to have you on board as well. Our, 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 um, online coordinator Chris Paulette is with us God bless you Chris uh, just want I'll mention it now really quick while you guys are getting on board tonight we're having a service at the church it's, it's the first Wednesday of the month and I've got a word for us but I'll tell you what lately God's been really putting on my heart uh, about reaching out right about reaching out about really uh, you know sharing our faith with others I feel like the the time is, is right people are in the right frame of mind to receive from God, and I believe God wants to use every single one of us. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started this morning, and uh, and and I'm so glad you guys are on board. So uh, so this is this is kind of a word I think that that helps us kind of to take inventory, right? I believe that uh, occasionally we need to kind of measure where we are and kind of see where where God what God is doing, right? So so today I've I've been kind of entitled my our gathering here. Uh, assess your atmosphere. Drop that in the chat. We're going to re-roll right now. Assess your atmosphere. That's right. Assess your atmosphere. Matthew chapter 9, verse 23 through 25, God's word says this. When Jesus came into the ruler's house and saw the flute players and the noisy crowd wailing, he said to them, make room for the girl. Make room for the girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they ridiculed him. But when the crowd was put outside, he went in and took her by the hand and the girl arose. The girl arose. What a powerful scripture. What a powerful example of what it is to create an atmosphere, to assess the atmosphere. Because this is so important. Drop this in the chat as well. Atmosphere produces miracles. Atmosphere produces miracles. You know, there's, 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 a, there's an old saying that says you are a product of your environment. See, our surroundings do play an important part of who we are. That's right. Creating that, that environment around us, being intentional, does have, a, uh, does have a direct connection to who we are and who we become. See, I, I love this. Write this in the chat. We're going to write a lot of stuff in the chat. I don't know if you can keep up with me or not today, but let's just do it. The environment of your past does not have to be the atmosphere for your future. Oh, come on, somebody. The environment of your past 
does not have to be the atmosphere for your future. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 3, it says this, For we have spent enough of our, life, of our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles, when we walk in lewdness, lust, drunkenness, revelry, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. See, it's so important to understand that we, we, we spend so much time in our past, we can't allow our past to transfer over into the future. Hey, drop this in the chat right now. It's time to forget the past. That's right, write that down. Forget the past. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 18 says this, Do not remember the former things nor consider the things of old. You see, you can't have a better tomorrow if you're still thinking about yesterday. Oh, come on now. See, forget the past, but remember the lessons. Man, drop, listen, drop that in the chat. Forget the past, but remember the lessons. See, in the past, we have failures. Uh, we have, we've fallen short. Uh, but, I, but I say this, that we, we fail, but we're not actual failures. We're only failures if we don't learn from the mistakes we made in our past. That's right. We've all made them, y'all. At the end of the day, we've all had issues. We've all fallen short. The Bible says we all fall short of the glory of God. That's that's a, that's that's gonna happen, right? But remember the lessons. Don't you know, forget the, the the situation we did. Let's not carry the guilt or the shame from the past. But remember the lessons so that we don't repeat them again. Amen. See, there are a lot of things in life we can't control, but I believe we can be intentional in creating the atmosphere that we desire. That's right. See, your faith has the power to design an atmosphere that attracts God's blessings and God's favor. That's right. Absolutely. See, you want to you stay in an atmosphere where the Lord can dwell in, where the Spirit of God feels welcomed. When you create that kind of an atmosphere, then you're preparing yourself for God to do miracles in your life. See, uh, there's, there's, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen this, but Indians used to wet their fingers and hold them in the wind to discern the direction of the currents. A lot of people still do that, right? It's like, which way is the wind blowing? Uh, you do do this and go and oh yeah you can feel the wind because the water gives them more sensitivity and you can pick up the wind see it's the same way they the indians were trying to decide which way the wind was blowing it's the same way you and i must learn to observe and just diagnose the currents the climate the emotional atmospheres others are creating around us Listen to what I'm saying, folks. It's not just us that, are, that have to contain or, or, or design and create an atmosphere. It's the fact that people around us create an atmosphere as well. So, so listen, write this down right now. Find the right people. That's right, find the right people. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 says this. Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light? with darkness. Man, that is so, so important. If you're going to assess the atmosphere and be intentional about creating it, then who you spend time with influences the atmosphere you're in. Mm, come on now. Write that in the chat right now. Who you spend time with influences the atmosphere you're in. That is so, un that we have to, that, that is so key. I, I think I touch on this almost at least once a week, if not more, about creating the right relationships with the right people. See, because you, you want to spend time with the right folks because they do create an atmosphere that you're in. See, their words, see, people's words can be poison or they can be power. See, when you assess the folks that you're talking to, are they speaking negativity all the time or are they being positive and drawing good things towards you and also edifying you when you listen to them. See, their words are either destructive or creative. That's right. It's so important to understand that people's words can pull you down or they can create good a good atmosphere around you. And, and you know, it's very important to understand that their words, people around you, either words are doubt or they're faith building. Man, listen, you, you, if, you, if you hang around people that are, that are always doubting things, uh, especially if they're skeptical or even worse, they're pessimistic. Listen, keep your distance. 
don't allow those spirits to influence you as well. You want to speak with, you want to be with people that speak faith, that speak trust in the Lord. You know, we can't control things, but people that are always whining and complaining, we got to, we got to keep our distance from them. Listen, we need to understand that who we bring around us creates an atmosphere. And, you know, and, and put this, drop this in the chat right now. Words create atmospheres. That's why right. words create atmospheres. So we have to know that the words that people are speaking around us can either build our faith or they can tear our faith down. And we need to understand that we have control over who we spend time with. That's right. You and I have the, the control over who we give our friendships to, right? See, assess these words accurately. Listen, on, allow only words that bring life to flow from your life. So it's not just uh, you, uh, the atmosphere that others create around you, but what kind of atmosphere are you creating around others? Are you the person that's speaking life and building people up? See, because I believe life needs to flow from us and needs to flow from our life with others. Allow only words that bring life to flow from your life. That's right. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 18 says this. There is one who speaks like the piercing of a sword, but the tongue of the wise promotes health. That's right. When somebody speaks words of life, man, it just it it, it creates health. It, it brings health into your bones, into your heart, into your mind. See, a wise man knows how to create a healthy atmosphere. See, that's what it's saying. A wise person promotes health, promotes good things. See, an atmosphere where people can thrive and become all God created them to be. That's the type of atmosphere you need to have around you, but it's also the type of atmosphere that you need to, to create in the lives of others. That's why I like that, Nene. We need to become life builders. That's right. An atmosphere where seeds of hope and faith are sown. See, are you constantly planting seeds of hope and faith in others as well by how you speak, by the fact that you pray for people when they have issues? I believe that's always the greatest open door that any of us can have is when somebody is downloading or uh, unloading their issues. Man, we can speak faith. We can speak God's word into that situation uh, and, and be able to be a, be a positive influence in their lives. See, I believe that when we do that, we create an atmosphere where miracles can happen. That's right. I but listen, I believe right there in the chat right now. I believe in miracles. See, you can live your life like there's no such thing as miracles. Matter of fact, there's a lot of rel religious denominations that think that miracles are from the past, that we need to just walk by God's word. Listen, I believe God's word is full of miracles. So when they say there's no more miracles, guess what? They're right. That's why they'll never see miracles in their lives because they don't believe in them. The Bible says that that God, that anything is possible to those that believe. And I, and I choose to believe that God can still do miracles. I've seen them. Listen, most, most of us here right now are miracles. <laughs> we're, we're just miracles in the making. We're mir we've seen miracles. If you're born again, you've had the greatest miracle occur in your life as well. And you need, and you see something happen. If we, if we remember the opening story, the opening scripture, when Jesus enters the house, the first thing he does is ask people to leave. Oh, come on now. Listen, when people enter the room, when I, I believe that he entered a room full of faith, that, uh, full of doubt, I'm sorry, full of doubt and unbelief. The Bible says they ridiculed him. So he knew that that atmosphere in that room would not would not be subjective to the miracle he's getting ready to bring, right? So he decided it's time to clear the room. Listen, when Jesus enters the room, he empties the room. Come on, somebody. That's right. When a spirit of God comes in the room, enemy, the devil has to flee. Come on. Spirits that don't believe have to go. See, he did the same thing in the temple when he flipped the tables and evicted the money changers. See, the temple was a house of prayer, not a den of thieves. That's why people won't let Jesus into their lives. Now listen to me carefully, guys. Jesus creates an atmosphere that when his presence invaded our lives, hindrances must exit. That's right. People won't accept Christ sometimes because they know that Christ is going to come in. He may have to flip some tables. Come on, somebody. I'm keeping it real. He may need to clean house. He may need to go and say, everybody, out. 
Everything has to go out. And God begins to rebuild our lives through Christ Jesus. And some folks, they know that's going to happen. They, and they're happy in their sin. Come on now. They're comfortable with their misery. But see, I believe that when you get to a certain place, when you're just, when you're broken and you come to an open heart, see, Jesus knew in this particular case, he was trying to, he was getting ready to raise a girl from the dead. Come on now. And see, Jesus knew the obstructions caused by people who lack faith in God. That's why we can't, listen, if you're going to be with people, be people who trust in God. And be that person that, that edifies the others. If you can't be around those, then create that atmosphere where you're the one being the catalyst. Listen, he knew there was just, there was just going, they, he knew that the people in that room, right, were wailing and crying, and all, but they were just going through the motions. Some of those folks, actually, they, back in the day, they used to pay people to do that. Come on, somebody. But Jesus knew that this was just a facade. See, in, in Matthew chapter 15, 18, uh, chapter uh, verse eight, the Bible says, "These people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me." Wow, you know it's so easy to go through the motions just because you know the Christian ease, just because you know the the routine. See, but how do we really establish an atmosphere for miracles? How do, we, how do we establish that place where God can dwell and the Holy Spirit can move freely through our lives and create changes in other people's lives as well? Listen, one of the things we have to do is this. Dismiss, write this down. Dismiss doubt from your life. That's right. Drop that in, right? Drop it in the chat right now. Dismiss doubt from your life. Listen, ask God to help you with your unbelief. That's right. We need to do that. Write that down. The second thing is this. Continue to feed your faith with, God, with God's word daily. That's right. Feed your faith. Feed the fuel of the fire of the Holy Spirit in your life. And the word of God is, that, is exactly that. The word of God creates this depth, this, this powerful uh, overflow of God's spirit in your life. So as you're feeding with, uh, yourself with God's word daily, it creates that atmosphere in your heart. See, listen to music that edifies your spirit. Amen. That's right. Make sure you turn into, tune into the right stations. Listen to the right music that would edify Identify you and bless you, amen. And of course, fellowship with the right people that, that 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 elevate your godly mindset. See, walking in the spirit is about having that mindset where we don't allow the flesh to rule over us, amen. And see, you can create an atmosphere where miracles can happen. I believe when you dismiss doubt, feed your faith, listen to the right music, create the right atmosphere fellowship with the right people, then you're going to put yourself in a place where God can do amazing things, not only in your life, but in the life of people around us. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go. Let's go. Let's do this, y'all. Let's take everything we learn and put it into action. If you weren't taking notes, I know some of y'all might be driving right now. Listen, listen to the program later on today. Write down a couple of things, you know, write the notes. I, I know people that are doing that right now because they're driving write the notes down keep it and, and uh, some of y'all have a notebook listen I, I am so blessed with some of y'all that tell me you got a whole notebook of stuff since the beginning that we've gotten together of all the notes you've taken praise god i believe god is going to bring those things back to remembrance and help you to walk in the spirit amen well praise god some of y'all coming in a little bit late listen it's okay no problem hit replay make sure you catch what i just spoke about i believe the holy spirit was very clear in meeting our needs and also clear with ministering to our hearts. Amen. Well, praise God. Well, listen, let's go ahead and take our atmosphere right now of, of a, 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 a posture of prayer. We're just going to pray for a few minutes before we end the program. Pray over what we, what we just spoke about as well. And also, I hope you brought your prayer list with you this morning as well. Amen. Well, praise God. Well, Heavenly Father, we just thank you and we praise you this morning. You are such a good God such a wonderful God, and we're so glad and we're so grateful for all that you're doing in our lives, in the lives of our families, in the lives of our spouses, Lord God, and our children. We thank you, Father God, you are faithful, and we praise you, Lord God, this morning. And Heavenly Father, help us to forget our past. 
Help us not to live in our past mistakes, our failures, our past regrets, Lord God, the things, the shame, Lord God, and the guilt from our past. In the name of Jesus, we no longer live there. We are new creations in Christ. That person that created all those issues is no longer living. He is under the blood. She has been nailed to the cross at Calvary. So in Jesus' name, we walk in newness of life, forgetting the past and looking forward to the future. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, bring the right people, Lord God, around us. Help us create new relationships, new friendships that would speak life into us, Lord God, that would be encouraging. Help us to find the right small group to connect to, Lord God. We can build each other up, Lord Father, and experience the, the blessing, Lord God, of true fellowship in Jesus' name. And, Father, help us to learn. Help us to learn the lessons from the mistakes we've made. We know, oh God, that we've made many, oh God, but we know that you're a God that helps us to learn so we can move forward, Lord Father, to learn and not do make those mistakes again. So in Jesus' name, we just thank you right now, Lord God, that we can learn and move forward and also share with others, Lord God, so they too will not make those same mistakes, oh God. And Father God, I thank you that your word helps build our faith. Uh, help us to continue, Lord God, to seek you like never before, to be in church every opportunity we can, to read your word daily, uh, to create an atmosphere, Lord God, of faith and miracles, to listen to the right type of music, oh God, that will lift up our spirits throughout the day because we know music creates atmospheres as well. Lord God, we know in Jesus' name that we can walk in faith and trust you. Help us to trust you, to believe you for great and mighty things, Lord God. Even those things which are impossible, even my, our unsaved loved ones and our friends that need you, we believe you, Lord God, for miracles, signs, and wonders. And right now, we lay hands on this prayer list that we have before us. We pray for every person on here that needs salvation. In Jesus' name, touch them right now. Bring them to the cross at Calvary. And if there's anyone right now listening right now, Lord Jesus, let them know that today they can be saved by a simple prayer. Just pray, Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sin. I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Holy Spirit, I welcome you into my life. Help me live for God for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name. That's all it took to get saved. So, Father, I thank you that many prayed it and that others will hear their, their loved ones, their friends, and their colleagues pray that prayer one day, oh God, in Jesus' name. I pray for divine healing, Lord God. Touch Sister Carmen, Lord God. Continue to strengthen Mama Rosa and be with Sister Dorothy. Protect her and guard her as well, Lord God. And all the brothers and sisters, Lord God, that are suffering, Lord God, with, with sicknesses and diseases, Lord God, and, and chronic illnesses as well. In Jesus' name, I come against every spirit of high blood pressure and diabetes right now. In the name of Jesus. We speak for divine healing over the bodies. Help us to eat the right things as well, to observe what we need to put into our bodies as well. In Jesus' name, and we thank you, Lord God, for your healing power that even food is medicine, Lord God. We thank you that even now we can partake in the right things as well. And in Jesus' name, oh God, I thank you for your divine manifestation of your healing power. It's by your stripes that we were healed. That's your word, and that's your promise. We thank you for it right now in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord God, for strongholds to be torn down around people's lives, for habits that they have, for hurts that they hold on to, for hang-ups that they're stuck, things that keep them stuck in Jesus' name. Break every chain right now in the name of Jesus. We speak freedom over them right now, over all the folks on our prayer list, even those that are listening to the program. Let them be set free today, Lord God, of all the things that hold them down, Lord Father, of the guilt and shame of the past. Help them forget and move forward, Lord God, in Jesus' name. And Lord, I thank you, Lord God, that even now we can walk in newness of life. I thank you, Father God, for providing for every need represented to those that are on our list right now, every need that they may have physical, spiritually, Lord God, financially. Lord, Lord I pray for a financial blessing 
upon your people. Provide for every area of their lives. Help them to be generous, Lord God, as they give as well, Lord God, their tithes and their offerings, that they can walk under an open heaven, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And Father, we just thank you for the victory today, Lord God. We thank you for your provision, for restoring lives, restoring relationships and marriages. We receive it done right now in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, hallelujah, for the victory. <laughs> we thank you, oh God, that it is done, it is finished, and we praise you. We receive it right now by faith in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. Come on, put your hands together. Throw a couple of claps in the chat right now. Listen, I don't ask for much. All I ask is this. If you were blessed by today's program, make sure uh, the, that you that you go ahead and share this. Amen. Hit the share button when you come off this thing. And let's get the word out that people need to walk in the spirit. Amen. Well, listen, I want to close with this scripture. It's found in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28. And God's word says this, Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably and with reverence and godly fear. Wow, that is such a powerful scripture. That's right. We receive a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Walk in the victory that God has for you today. Don't worry about what you have to encounter today. God is already there. Just keep your head up, shoulders back, move forward. And I believe God's going to do great and mighty things for you as well. Amen. Well, praise God. Well, listen, I am so glad you joined me this morning. Glad to be live. Listen, I have been traveling. I will be traveling again this week. I have to leave crazy uh, early on Friday morning. Uh, but I think I may have time to do the program live. But, uh, but, I, but there's a possibility that Monday I'll have to do a recording for you guys because I'll be in Florida. Please pray for me. I'm doing a, a wedding down there as well. Amen. So, so praise God. I just want to let you know once in a while you'll see a recording. Trust me, it's because I had to be somewhere. Couldn't get back in time. Just want to keep you guys posted. Keep sharing. Keep loving one another. Keep praying, believing, and trusting God. Amen. Tonight, again, it's the first Wednesday. It's the first Wednesday of the month. So make sure, make it out to church tonight. I believe God's got a word for you. The podcast will be starting this month. Somebody just mentioned that. Yes, yes, yes. I will let you know. I got a little bit behind on my date because of all the things that happened. My son got married last weekend. Just so many activities. It was almost overwhelming, but God is a God of peace and a God of order. My wife and I took a couple of days off earlier this, uh, actually this week. Uh, we took out Sunday. We took off Monday and Tuesday. We weren't in church. Missed you guys on Sunday, but Lord willing, um, I'll be I'll be gone to this Sunday again, so I won't see you at church. But please keep us in your prayers. A lot of things going on in our lives right now. It's all good, right? But I'm really I'll be glad when a lot of stuff settles down, if it ever does, right? Amen. Well, listen. God bless you. See you tonight, right, church? Share the program and listen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord shine His face upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance towards you and give you peace this day in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Listen, God bless you. See you tonight. And remember, when you're walking in the spirit, you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. Have a blessed day. And Lord willing, I'll see you again tomorrow right here in Walking in the Spirit at 7 a.m. God bless you.